What's going on guys, it's Caleb and today I have this 5th gen Mustang that is in for a detail. I say 5th gen because I don't remember what year it was, I asked the owner, I, I, I don't remember. But overall, it's a black Mustang that just got recently repainted not too long ago, and it's definitely got some blemishes to it, and we're definitely going to take care of this thing. I'll tell you right now that this paint is very soft, and I know doing a simple one-step polish with something as simple as some perfect finish is going to do well with a Rupes yellow pad, but overall, we're going to go ahead and get these wheels started first. These wheels are in bad shape, and there are definitely some parts I am not able to get out with my brushes and with the timing of the detail we gotta just kind of move things along i went ahead and made sure the owner knew about the parts of the wheels that were just unrecoverable with just my brushes it would definitely need further work but before we go any further into the video if you could just take a real quick second and like the video go ahead and press subscribe and go ahead and ring that bell that way you know every single time i upload i say it pretty much every video because doing any of those things genuinely helps out the channel and it really it, it shows guys i couldn't have been this far along without any of your guys' support and as always i hope you guys enjoy the video so let's go ahead and keep things rolling. Right here is a prime spot to give you an example of what kind of stuff's not coming off of these wheels. It's literally just a bunch of gunk that is just sitting there and I just had to even switch to the stiffer brush to really try my hardest to get it off. Some of it did, but some of it didn't. And it's only on the front wheels, not necessarily on the back. The back's really cleaned up nice. But like I said earlier, I went ahead and told the owner and that's very important guys. If you are a detailer or doing something for a friend when it comes to car detailing, whatever, don't be afraid to tell the owner of the vehicle what the situation is, especially if it's some sort of situation where you can't get something completely clean. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be okay with it. And a lot of times, too, you'll find where the owner kind of expected it as well. By the way, a few videos back, I told you about different tools and whatnot that I'm starting to add to my collection. Right here is a good look at some press-all bottles. If you guys don't know anything about press-all bottles, check out Obsessed Garage on YouTube as well as his website. He does sell them. These things are awesome.
The first method of attack on the paint is going to be me using the IK sprayer with some Meguiar's D101, which is their all-purpose cleaner, and diluted 4 to 1. I'm going to spray this on the entire surface of the vehicle, acting as a pre-treatment before I go into washing it. In doing so, I'm going to take my Max Shine Boar's Hair Detail Brush and go through all the little nitty-gritty spots that are kind of hard to get, as well as go over the front grill and emblem, just because there's a lot of bugs there. One thing to note too, because of the Florida sun, even having a canopy, I'm having some parts of the vehicle start to dry. So from here on out, I'm starting to do things in sections. So that's a little trick you can use whenever there is too much sun or too much heat or whatever. Do every single part of the vehicle section by section. So left side, front, right side, back. Other than that though, let's go ahead and drop some cinematic bars on the top and bottom, some cool music and get to foaming this thing down and hand washing it. Adam's Iron Remover is the product I am going to be using for a chemical decontamination on the paint. And as for what is on video, the chemical decontamination portion is all you're going to see, mostly because by this point of the detail, the sun was just beating down in every spot that I could put down my camera, and I was just getting overheating warnings on it, and it would just pretty much have a timeout. So we did end up mechanically decontamination this car, mostly because that's what you should do before you go into polishing. You want to make sure you have a really nice, clean surface of paint before you go in there with a polisher and some polish, because you're going to gunk up pads harm the paint even more all sorts of different things that can happen but you can also see too here where there are some mess ups in the paint I'm not sure if it was just because the bumpers weren't painted or what the deal might have been overall the paint looked pretty great but right here you can see some little blips of the paint being kind of rough in a few spots this really wasn't that big of a deal though because after we got done polishing the paint and making it look as good as it did it really wasn't too much of an eyesore <laughs> So when it comes to a really in-depth one-step correction or just the most basic of basic bare bone make it look better than it was previously kind of one-step polish i love to use rupaz yellow pads as well as sonax's perfect finish if you're in the industry and or a hobbyist or enthusiast you know this is kind of like an ideal setup whenever it comes to doing a one-step polish because most paints will accept this kind of setup quite well and i will say this paint responded phenomenally to this thing and as you watch me go through the entire polishing process you'll see where the paint starts to 
35. Mostly because this paint didn't really have any intense deep scratches or swirls, so therefore it really turned out awesome at the end. And then once we put the protectant coating on it, it just kind of takes it to a whole nother level. This thing really was awesome. But this is a very basic one step just to kind of clean up the paint and just make it look presentable, and I'd say it went very well. If you listened to me earlier, you heard me talk about doing things in different sections. This is a prime example of that. Because of the sun beaming onto the paint and making it really hot on one side, I definitely did not want to polish in direct sunlight, so I ended up backing the car in the opposite direction. You'll see it later on in the video, just a couple minutes from now, but I wanted to go ahead and switch this thing around so that way the sun wasn't directly beating on where I was polishing. The surface prep product I am using for this particular detail is going to be Atom Surface Prep. If you see my previous videos, you know that my main product for this particular kind of thing is a CarPro's eraser. That stuff just smells so amazing and it is a really good product. Right off the bat, I will tell you this product works phenomenal. It really does. It does the job. It's an isopropic alcohol mixture that gets rid of polish and oils and all that stuff. But I will say it does not smell as good as CarPro eraser.
In the last few videos, you guys know that I have really been loving the ceramic 3-in-1 wax from Griot's Garage. It really is such a good product. You spray it on once, and then you go ahead and wipe it down, flip the towel, buff it away, give it a little bit of time, and then just do another coat. And this stuff lasts for like six to eight months, I think, or it could be a year. I don't remember what the label said. But it lasts a long time, and it gives you the same properties as ceramic. The gloss is there, the hydrophobic properties are there, the UV protection is there. It really is just an all-around easy product. It is probably the easiest ceramic product I've used so far. And just another tip too for those of you guys who are watching these videos and are just recently getting into the hobbyist side of things or like the enthusiast side of detailing, the reason we use a surface prep product is to make sure that this surface is completely squeaky clean with no oils or anything so that a product such as Creates Garage's 3-in-1 ceramic wax can bond to the surface appropriately without any crud getting in the way. I also will say don't be afraid to use two or three microfiber towels whenever you're using this kind of particular product. You really want to clean microfiber to make sure that stuff gets on the surface well. Other than throwing on some Meguiar's Hyper Dressing for the tire dressing, we're pretty much done with this thing. I have to say, it turned out gorgeous, and I've said it in multiple other videos where black paint is concerned. Whenever you have polished black paint that is coated with something good, it just looks like no other. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for spending time with me again with another detail. I'd have to say this one was pretty successful, and we did everything that the owner asked, which made them happy, which makes me happy. If you guys like the video, please go ahead and show me by leaving a like, and if you like detailing content, go ahead and press subscribe, and if you ring that bell you will know every single time i upload a video once again guys thank you so much for spending time with me this week and i will see you all next week with a jeep i think it's a jeep something like that you'll see